Reading for August 28th, entitled, The Third Angel's Message is Sure. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 and 10. The Lord desires to see the work of the third angel's message carried forward with increasing efficiency. As he has worked in all ages to give victories to his people, so in this age he longs to carry to triumphant fulfillment his purposes for his church. He bids the saints to advance unitedly, going from strength to greater strength, from faith to increased assurance and confidence in the truth and righteousness of his cause. Let us ever bear in mind that our work is to be one of advancement. We are to follow on to know the Lord. God understands the actuating principles of every mind. He has witnessed the persistent, rebellious course of some whom He has warned and counseled repeatedly. His all-seeing eye has noted the determined following of human devisings. The way of man is before the Lord. He knoweth the thoughts. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. He looketh to the ends of the earth, and he seeth under the whole heavens. The Lord searcheth the hearts. We are to stand firm as a rock to the principles of the word of God, remembering that God is with us to give us strength to meet each new experience. Let us ever maintain the principles of righteousness in our lives, that we may go forward from strength to strength in the name of the Lord. We are to hold as very sacred the faith that has been substantiated by the instruction and approval of the Spirit of God from our earliest experience until the present time. Arouse the people to the importance of the times in which we live, that they may be led to place themselves under the discipline of Christ. In his human life, Christ revealed a divine nature. No defect appeared in his character. Beholding his life of self-denial and sacrifice that he might minister truth to the world, they may be changed in life and learn to reflect his likeness. Let us not be unconcerned regarding our responsibility to form righteous characters, but let us place ourselves under the molding influence of the Holy Spirit that we may form characters that will reflect the divine life. Taken from Letter 66, dated August 28, 1911, to S. N. Haskell, President of the California Conference.